And when I started reading about uh, account-based marketing, uh, there was an article uh, by John, that one of the founders of Marketo called Fishing with Spears. I'll never forget reading it and realizing that this is what my team was doing, but we were sales development reps in sales, not in marketing. And I got a little kind of, uh, I got a little uppity on my collar and I wanted to uh, put out a best practice and rename it and put sales development in the title. And so I wrote an article called Account-Based Sales Development, a new methodology in outbound demand generation. And it, 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 it caught fire and it went viral and um, you know, now seven or eight years later, it's been something that not only have I brought into my consultancy, but I'm bringing into Snowflake. And I think a lot of global SDR and demand gen leaders are using the technology and the process and the energy of SDRs to get, you know, to get the word of their companies out. This is, I agree with uh, Jason Lemkin of Saster on this, that I think every founder should want to try to get their startup to at least a million in ARR by themselves. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, and I remember 10 plus years ago, um, there were a lot of founders that were afraid to get on the phones, afraid to sell. And, and so my challenge, Jesse uh, and Randy, is um, if this is the team that a founder puts together uh, from one to five million, let's say, um, uh, as they get to 10 million and, and they want to go beyond that, uh, in you know, the challenge to you is what comes next um, in sales, in marketing, and in revenue? Um, what roles do you think that founding team should hire to take the company from five or 10 million and beyond? Um, as a part of that, um, if they have, if, if they have, uh, you know, the odds are, uh, so the challenge is to date, all they really have is CRM. Uh, they have an, an instance of, let's say, Groove, um, and they have LinkedIn Sales Navigator. And I'm really curious how you guys would then build the team out on sales, marketing, and revenue. So you're, you're walking into a company that has uh, one uh, digital content marketer, two SDRs, one quarter carrying sales rep, uh, a, a CRM administrator slash sales ops uh, generalist, and a customer success manager. And things are going in the right direction. Leads are coming in. There's some outbound motions. Uh, forecast is starting to uh, grow. Um, but there's there's there there's no let's say adults uh, at the table yet. They're all individual contributors. Everyone's wearing 13 hats, um, uh, uh, you know, and they're having a handful of early customer success. So this is uh, your classic B2B technology SaaS, uh, mid five uh, figures, so fifty thousand dollars average average sales price relatively complex, maybe a six month sales cycle. So it's not selling a widget for five grand. Um, it's the reason why there's SDRs. It's an SDR motion, qualify, set a meeting up for an account executive. And um, so, yeah, so a six month sales cycle, average kind of mid five figures, uh, reaching up to maybe six and it's a B2B technology SaaS product. Uh, I'm gonna start with the sales tech stack. Um, you said you had Groove. Um, I would swap out Groove for outreach, uh, cause I think that's better. Uh, I think you said we have, did you say we have a CRM, so HubSpot or something, Lars? Yeah, yeah, HubSpot. Okay, great, okay, good. And then um, I would uh, work in um, outreach, uh, Seamless or Zoom Info, flip a coin, take Seamless. Uh, Sendoso I would have early on for the uh, gifting side because we want to help use that to help get us some uh, meetings. And then uh, I think value selling is going to be important. So there's a, a, a tool called uh, Decision Link that you may, may or may not be familiar with. And um, it, it may be overkill, but I would get uh, force management, uh, get John Kaplan in to do some skinny deal um, to help make sure that all our sellers get trained appropriately on MedPick going forward and uh, he should hopefully be willing to bet on us because he knows we're going to be a raging success and then be a great paying customer 
a couple years down the road. And then um, some other things, uh, but we're not big enough for commission yet for Captivate IQ. So I think that's pro, um, Clary, maybe like in a year for uh, for forecasting. And then, um, you know, ABM side, you know, maybe a, a six cents or terminus, maybe the six cents. So those would be some of the tools I would use. Um, in terms of the uh, sales headcount, which I think was your exercise, uh, I think I would go with the total of 41. Um, I work out that I can do a revenue plan. Uh, let me just add the math here of 10, 11, 12. I think it works out to be about 12 million. So you're kind of a, a bit all over on the uh, on the exact number, but you know this would be the team I'm going to go through. I think can uh, position as well for 12 million. Um, I would have a um, outside leader and a inside leader, uh, preferably. Uh, an inside leader wherever our headquarter location is. Uh, I'm biased to Boston, but obviously Chicago or somewhere Midwest is uh, good for travel. And if possible, I have the uh, outside sales leader for sure somewhere kind of middle of the country if possible. Um, I know you said no to the channel, so this could um, get me voted off island right away, but I would, uh, I would put three um, inside SDR type folks at CDW in Chicago one supporting the uh, east, one the central, and one the west. And um, my experience is you can have them physically there, you can have them walking, depending upon the solution that we have, you figure out what cohort of reps um, are the ones that could be selling it. And I would have um, those three have metrics, but they would just be an overlay to the, uh, the, the sales team I'm about to go through. Uh, I would have 10 uh, SDRs uh, with, with a target of about 300K. And those 10 would be selling kind of below the line. However, we end up kind of defining that on their own um, to the tune of 300K each. So that would get us um, $3 million. And uh, with all these, I would over assign by probably 15 to 20% to net out. So this would be kind of what I'd call kind of a board level financial plan. Uh, and then on the outside reps, um, I would target 10 cities. And uh, again, I know this probably flies in the face of what you would do, but I'm kind of old school with kind of relationships and scaling and things like that. So the cities I would identify would be um, uh, Boston, New York, Atlanta for the east, Chicago, Houston, Dallas for the Midwest, and then Seattle, San Fran, and Southern California for the west. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I'd probably get a roamer. Um, based on maybe a Denver or somewhere else, kind of based on the opportunity, I would uh, quota or I'd have a board plan of them for uh, 700K each. So those 10 would be $7 million. And then I would have in 10 uh, sort of SDR support reps that are complementary to those outside reps. And they likewise would be um, uh, selling kind of however we end up defining above the line versus the other inside ones that are below the line. So as an example, you'd have a, um, outside rep in San Francisco, and he would be supported uh, by an inside rep in terms of uh, lead gen, uh, setting up sales calls, things like that. And then I, I like that model because I've seen that work well over the years within those inside folks, likewise then can be, you know, promote up into outside reps. And then you just kind of, you know, keep, keep that wheel churning. Um, and then I would do six that are um, inside at our headquarters focused on international. Uh, and those would be uh, probably three for APAC and three for EMEA. I'd give them 300K each. So that would be about 1.8 million. So if you add all that up, you've got 1.8 for those um, six international. You got 7 million for the 700K of the 10. You got the uh, 3 million for the uh, inside. So round number that gets us 10, about 11.8 million, uh, which is I think, you know, rough in the ballpark of uh, kind of where you said. Um, so that's kind of the headcount that I would have. And then uh, Jesse is the marketing expert, so I'm gonna to defer to him for the uh, marketing plan. Ah, I love it. Yeah, definitely. So uh, so just kind of going back through it, uh, when we're, the next hire for me would definitely be a marketing ops person. Uh, because you know if you have kind of the sales ops, a lot of the times they're not gonna be able to get the analytics on the website and get like that installed right. And since this is kind of an upmarket play, we're gonna wanna run the right ad campaigns at the right people if we do decide to go that way, especially with an ABS, we wanna make sure that all of our ad dollars are going towards those accounts that we have. So that's the first hire. And in terms of technology, 
I think we got to start back at the data. We got to try to get something like a segment on and hopefully we'll probably have an underlying, I mean, it doesn't count on RevTech, but we'll have Snowflake underneath, you know, the old Snowflake platform here for, uh, for us to have that underneath the uh, layer there for customer data. So that's the starting point. We'll have Snowflake there and that's going to be where we're going to start from. And then we're going to try to figure out where we've kind of got some traction in our content and we're going to be able to see everything and attribute everything inside all the events, everything tracked. Then we're going to have that content marketer build that portal where there's all kinds of uh, resources and ways to talk through the technology. And that'll be an account based uh, resourcing platform. So they'll have you know, if I were, if I was to even look at like how Snowflake does it, you know, you have all of your companies that you're targeting, you're driving them into your resourcing section. You know, if you're, if you're targeting the financial services, you want to kind of show stuff about financial services. You want your SDRs to be ready to do that. And then, so the marketing ops is going to be the first one, the technology wise, you're going to want to get your marketing automation uh, tied in. Sounds like we have HubSpot. So we'll continue that. However, we want the data to reside in a customer data platform. So, uh, on top of that, what we're going to want to do is get some sort of uh, account uh, data. So like I would say probably for this, we'd want to go Clearbit reveal and Clearbit's enrichment product where we can actually enrich who we have coming into the website and we can also go find our ICP. So we want both of those kind of like included in one. And then we'll have, we'll be able to kind of figure out exactly what companies we're targeting, make sure hundred percent of the ad dollars are going. And then we're going to want to make sure that we're doing some orchestrations around uh, when we're talking to these accounts. We can do cadences, but what we really want to do is try to get some executive quarterbacking going on with the SDR. So this is where we're going to try to hire an enablement person to try to build out, help facilitate the marketing. And I'd say a product person, a product um, marketing person. So enablement and product marketing will get all the resources to all the SDR and AE. We don't need that AE leader yet because we don't have a full pod yet, we're gonna to wanna to hire one more AE. And once we have that pod, and that pod is up to 80% of our, our uh, unit economics for the, for the sales team, they're hitting 80% of their quota, then we can scale out and we can hire another pod that will uh, then become, it's kind of Kubernetes for sales, right? You kind of have your uh, containerized pods and then we're gonna scale sustainably. So we're not gonna, uh, if we have more customers, we then hire another customer success person. If we have more, uh, we need more outbound leads or because this is an outbound model based on the size of the deal, we're going to need to hire more SDRs on the outbound side. And, and then we're going to kind of build these pods incrementally and we're going to find out the right mix, the right level, the right hiring uh, method there. And we have our enablement, we have our marketing ops, we have our sales ops. So we're so the next um, and then the next hires we're going to make are going to be around. Uh, so this this right here is going to take us to two million easy because we have we have one eight that's going to go a million dollars in quota. They're going to get to the 80 per, 1.2 quota. They're going to get to a million. We're going to hire the next AE. Then we're going to split off one of those SDRs or AEs to form another pod. And then we're going to hire the next team there. So we don't have to overinvest on sales management yet. Uh, I will say that um, both of you made a ton of sense, but what who resonated the most with me is, is uh, I, I got to... I, uh, it's all going to happen right here, Jesse. All right. I, I, I got to give the 51%, 49 to 51%. Oh, and oh, man. It, it, had, it had more to do with the growing kind of uh, let's, let's, let's see how this works. And as it works and we get the teams to 80%, let's go ahead and, uh, and, and then continue to grow. Um, and I, you know, and I think, you know, product-led growth and deliberate growth and intentional growth is something that uh, uh, all founders should take heed. I think what all of us have done a lot of is we failed, um, but we figured things out uh, when we failed and, uh, you know, we got to better uh, pretty quickly.